All right, Stock Western fans, it's been a long time since I actually started another rerun TV show. Leave it to Beaver, season two. Let's check it out. Leave it to Beaver. Episode one, Beaver's Poem. Starring Barbara Billingsley. Did you help me, Dad? I gotta write a poem for school. Oh, not tonight, Beaver. I, I had a very hard day at the office. When's the poem due? Tomorrow. Tomorrow? Oh. I'd like to write about... Um, bears. Bears. Right. I would like to be a bear. What'd you do? This is perfectly ridiculous, expecting me to do your homework for you. You put things off until the last minute, and then you don't even try. Well, do you have a word? I don't have anything. Put this away for tonight, huh? But I gotta have it by the morning. Miss Flanders said so. Oh, now, don't you worry about that. We'll get up and do it before breakfast. Have it done in no time. Gay and happy, free from care. <laughs> gonna read that poem he wrote last night. They're giving him a prize or something. His poem won a prize? Yeah, they had a rehearsal today. But we just can't let him get up in assembly and read that poem? Accept a prize for something he didn't do? No, I guess we can't. But gee, Dad, I really did write the poem. No, Beaver. You just copied it. You didn't really write it. Yes, I did. I wrote it, and I put my name on it, and it's going to be in a school paper? Your father went down to your school today. He went to school on a Saturday. He made a special appointment with Mrs. Rayburn to explain about your poem. He's going to talk to Mrs. Rayburn? Okay, uh, that's the life like no other. Climbing trees. <laughs> Climbing trees with my mother. <laughs> Suppose we let Theodore write his own poem between now and Monday. Mrs. Rayburn, I think it's very nice of you to give uh, uh, both of us another chance. Once I wished I was a duck, because mostly ducks have lots of luck. They swim around all day in a pool and mostly never have to go to school. <laughs> Leave it to Beaver. Episode 2, Eddie's Girl. Starring Barbara Billingsley. I can only see him for a minute because I have to go over and see my girl. Well, he's up in his room. Uh, when you have a girl, you can't spend all your time with the fellas. You have to spend some time with your girl. Uh, I'm Wally Cleaver. I'm Eddie. Oh, well, uh, I suppose you've come over to see Carolyn. Uh, well, she did, but I just kind of came along. I'm Eddie. Eddie Hassel. Oh, yes. I've seen you riding your bike up and down in front of the house. That was pretty funny. <laughs> what? I can't make a believe she didn't recognize me. Yeah, that was pretty funny. That one boy seemed very nice. Yes, his name is Wally Cleaver. Oh, yes. I met his mother. I wonder if... I think I could ask him to that dance that they're having at the club tomorrow night. Excuse me, Beaver, can't you see I'm on the phone? Sure, but I'm home. Right, you're home. Well, thanks again for asking. I'm sure Wally will be delighted. Maybe she doesn't know she's your girl. <laughs> of course she does. Boy, when I find out who this other guy is, I'm gonna fix him good. Hey, Dad. What? You know what she's trying to do to me? Who's she? Mom, she's trying to ruin my whole life. Oh, she's doing nothing with yes, the Yes, she is. She's trying to make me go to the dance with that Carolyn Cunningham, and I'm not going. Well, I don't know what I'm not going to be able to go to the dance. <laughs> Gee, Eddie, I didn't think you were going anyway. Yeah, well, Carol was just making that up about going with some other guy. <clears throat> with a sore throat and everything. Oh, I wanted... Could you take her for me? Yeah. 
Gee, well, I don't know. He's wearing his gray suit. Huh? To the dance. But what he was so against it a little while ago? What in the world made him change his mind? Well, I found out before that Carolyn asked Wally to the dance. I knew he wouldn't go. On account of being my best friend. So that's how come I made up about the sore throat. Leave it to Beaver. Episode 3, Ward's Problem. Starring Barbara Billingsley. As you read on the bulletin board, this coming Saturday, the third grade is having its fathers and students picnic. We'll all attend here and... Then, hey, Wally, if you must do that, take the click off. And gee, Janet makes a neat sound. Let's save the neat sound for when we're fishing, huh? Yeah, that really got an early start Saturday. He certainly is excited about that picnic on Saturday, isn't he? Certainly is excited about that picnic on hey, Saturday. Hey, this thing's next Saturday. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> well? Well, I promised Wally I'd take him fishing this Saturday. The thing is, you see, uh... And I talked to Eddie about making those noises of people in the car. He said he'd cut it out and everything. Well, I'm not going to disappoint you, Wally. Gee, Dad, thanks. I knew you wouldn't. Um, hey, Wally, did I tell you? Dad's taking me to a cross picnic. Yeah? When is it? The Saturday. You're goofy, Beaver. Dad's taking me and Eddie fishing up at Crystal Falls. Dad's taking you this Saturday? Didn't. What did he say about my fishing trip? Well, Wally, he said he'd talk to you about it tonight. Now, come on, boys. You're going to be late for school. Have a good day. Bye. Bye. You see, Beef? Dad didn't sign your paper, so he's taking me fishing. But Theodore, we have to know today whether or not your father's taking you. Is he? Well, uh... I think he's got to go on a business trip. Hey, Eflin, Judy said you just made that up because your father forgot to sign your paper. He wouldn't forget to sign a thing like that. I hope so, because I'd hate to see your father show up at the picnic and have everybody say you're a liar. Yeah. Well, gosh, Wally, I hate to let you down again, but I'm just going to have to take Beaver to his school picnic. Gee, Dad, it was three a day. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, you give it to your teacher first thing in the morning and tell her I'll be able to take you after all. You can't take me now, Dad. Why'd you make up all those stories about me going to Washington and the picnic being called off? If I tell you, you'll be even madder at me. I'm not mad at you, Beaver. Filled with the spirit of conquest, soda pop, and hard-boiled eggs. Look, Wally, this is what it cut. Hey, boy, that's me, Beaver. It's solid gold plastic. <laughs> Leave it to Beaver. Episode 4, Beaver and Chewy. Starring Barbara Billingsley. And when I'm down there, I'm dope. Chewy's just about my best friend. He's kind of dumb-looking, Mr. Cleaver. I saw him on Sunday, and he was wearing short pants. <laughs> Nos gusta mucho su hijito. I beg your pardon? I... I do not speak English. Come on, I'll show you my electric train. See, Bob? Beaver, do you understand what he says? Uh-uh. I just understand what he means. Come on, let's go, Chewy. Yes. Beaver y yo podemos usar tu bicicleta? He speaks Spanish, all right. We'll teach Beaver to say, Usted tiene una cara como puerco. And what's it mean? You have a face like a pig. Spanish. I can teach you. Candy. Gee, Eddie, that'd be swell. What can I say? Just say, Usted tiene una cara como puerco. 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 Yeah, puerco. Joey, what are you doing? Joey? Papa, you're hard. You're hard to cry. To cry. My boy is to cry. <laughs> yes, Chu is crying. We know that, but why? Now, Beaver, look, we have to know what happened. Mr. and Mrs. Rell are very upset. Do you say things to Roberto? Who's Roberto? Uh, Chu, I think it's his... Puerco. <laughs> Bye.
Vamos. Oh, oh, you mean to tell me you are responsible for this? Wow. What Beaver said to Chewy wasn't what Beaver wanted to say to Chewy. Well, it's what Eddie wanted Beaver to say to Chewy. Tonight. Well, I hope this letter straightens things out. One year of high school Spanish. I just hope it doesn't make things worse. Ward, listen. We learn from our children, please accept our forgiveness. Via Cadiz, Enrica and Carlotta Varela. Where are you going? My goal is Slug Eddie. Wally, <laughs> that's no way to talk. This is Sunday. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll wait till tomorrow. I'm slugging in the cafeteria. <laughs> Leave it to Beaver. Episode 5, The Lost Watch. Starring Barbara Billingsley. Hey, I'll take, uh... What's the matter, Wally? Can't you see me? Yeah, Lumpy, but I can't see anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> Look, don't call me Lumpy. Okay, class. Would you do me a favor? You can hold my wallet. Hey, thanks, Wally. Here, you can hold my watch. Here's my jacket. Here's my shirt. Hey, Wally. Well, give me my watch. What watch, Lumpy? The wristwatch I gave you to mind. I remember you giving me a watch. Clarence, boy, supper. I gotta go now. But you better find that watch. <laughs> Look, kid, I want that watch. My father ever finds out, you'll be in big trouble. Uh huh. Maybe you stole it. You want me to go to the police? But they wouldn't give it to you. Well, why wouldn't they? Well, uh, supposing they lost it. Oh, they couldn't get away with that. If I trust them with my money, they're responsible for it. <laughs> what do you want me to do? Go to your father and tell him you stole my watch? Oh, please don't do that. That watch cost $15. You want me to go to the police? Oh, please don't do that either. The man over there said this is why I could deem this in for money. <laughs> you want to redeem this bond? Yes, sir. And uh, are you Theodore Cleaver? Well, if you hold on to this for 10 years, it'll be worth $25. Well, I don't need $25 in 10 years. I need $15 now. Would you get me a Mr. Ward Cleaver? Well, he's really outdone himself this time. Imagine he's sneaking the bond out of the desk and trying to cash it. Do you mind? Give me stuff to mind. And now when the game was over, I gave back all the stuff, except for one boy who I didn't have a watch to give back to. You lost someone's watch? That's what he said. I, I understand your boy lost a watch. Yeah, it'd be coming. Oh, oh you knew about it? Oh, yes. Yes, he lost it a couple of weeks ago. His mother found it in the lining of his jacket, but we didn't mention anything about it. We're waiting for him to come and tell us he lost his watch. Watch. You're probably afraid Fred would jump all over it. Maybe that's why the beaver didn't come to you. Hmm? Well... Gee, I'm awful sorry for causing you all this trouble, Mr. Cleaver. I'm really sorry. I know you are, Clarence. We'll say no more about it. Thank you. So long, Wally. So long, beaver. So long. Leave it to beaver. Episode 6, Her Idol. Starring Barbara Billingsley. What about Linda Dennison? Well, Clarence, she's always looking at me. Well, do you ever look back at her? Not if I can help it. Linda, how'd you get up there? I climbed up. I have freckles. <laughs> well, uh... Be getting down. We might be making the eggs nervous. <laughs> uh, that's what paint. We know it's what paint. All about Linda Dennison's your girl. She is not my girl. Then why were you talking to Linda Dennison if she's not your girl? Sure they were. They were sitting up in a tree. Linda's a beaver. <laughs> they really were sitting up in a tree all day Saturday and Sunday. Didn't they even come down to eat? <laughs> she's not your girlfriend, then call her something. Sure, call her a funny name if she's not your girl. <laughs> well, my, my will. 
Linda Dennison, you're a smelly old ape. <laughs> Quite a day at school. I guess I did too, Dad. Does <laughs> Miss Raven say anything about me hitting Larry in the stomach? No. Me and Linda were sitting in a tree, and the kid said she was my girl, so I called her a name to prove that she wasn't. <laughs> Some of you seem to think there's something shameful about a little boy and a little girl liking one another. Now let's think about it for a minute. Hi, Beaver. Hi, Linda. Come on up. Hi, Beaver. Leave it to Beaver. Episode 7, Beaver's Ring. Starring Barbara Billingsley. Aunt Martha? Oh, yeah, she's the one that always sends us umbrellas at Christmas. Yeah. She's our umbrella aunt. Well, she sent you a present today, Beaver. Well, look, Mom. Look, Juan. Look, Dad, it's a ring. Yes, and it's a very lovely ring. That belonged to Aunt Martha's brother when he was your age, and she's sending it to you because you were named after him. Gee, I didn't know I had an Uncle Beaver. <laughs> Beaver, the ring is yours, but we don't want you to wear it to school because you might lose it, and then your Aunt Martha would be very upset. That's your neat ring you got there, Beaver. I don't see any carrots, Beaver. <laughs> They're not that kind of carrots, Whitey. They're gold carrots, and there's 14 of them. Yes. <laughs> Beaver, if this doesn't work, I'm afraid we're going to have to call your mother. Oh, gee, couldn't you call somebody else? Like who? Mrs. Cleaver, I'm afraid there's only one way we're going to get that ring off Beaver's finger. Dr. Hendricks will have to cut it off. If they've got to cut it off, that's all right with me. But I just want to know, it's just about my favorite finger. All right, Beaver. What are we going to do about the ring? What are we going to tell Aunt Martha? She's going to be very upset when she learns about this. Well, uh... Dear Aunt Martha, I was very happy to get your ring. I took it to school. I was not supposed to. I got it stuck on my finger and I was sorry. Gee, what'd you do that for, Dad? I thought my punishment was sending Aunt Martha the letter. No, Beaver. I think it was punishment enough just to write the letter. Leave it to Beaver. Episode 8, The Shave. Starring Barbara Billingsley. Hey, don't tell me you're starting to shave. What do you mean, starting? I've been shaving for over two months. I've been shaving for six months. No fooling? Well, I bet those guys weren't as fuzzy as you are when they started to shave. Boy, don't forget all those guys are older than I am. Really? What do you think I'm doing? I'm a shave. Where'd you get the shave stuff? Well, I uh, kind of borrowed it out of Dad's room. Well, I, uh, did you put my razor back? Huh? <laughs> After you finish shaving. Well, you shave. And the more you shave, the more your beard grows. Yeah. Well, I was just thinking. If I shaved every day, by the end of the week, I'd have a pretty good beard. Wally asked me in to watch him shave. Wally, I just got home. I have five minutes to get to the Rutherfords, and you have my razor. Now, didn't we go through all this before about you shaving, and didn't you agree with me? Um, uh, yeah, Dan. He was shaving with his pop's razor when his pop walked in. Come on, Eddie, cut it out. His pop jumped all over him. He thought he was a kid, and he didn't have anything to shave. I guess I was so upset, I forgot all about Eddie Haskell's being there. Yeah. He told all the guys, they made fun of Wally about being a baby face. Say, Mr. Cleaver, now that I have Wally in the chair, should I give him the once-over lightly? You mean a shave? 
Well, you could use a little cleaning up. Did you really get Wally a shave? I sure did, with Andy's cooperation. He didn't do much more than scrape the lather off his face, but I think he did the trick as far as Wally was concerned. Uh, about this barbershop thing, though. Oh, uh, yeah, Dad. Uh, that was real neat what you did, well, you know, with all the guys there and everything. Oh, that's all right, Wally. I think I kind of owed you that. Leave it to Beaver. Episode 9, The Pipe. Starring Barbara Billingsley. Hey, what a weird looking pipe. Oh, it's a Meerschaum. Uh, Fred sent it to all of us. How well, thoughtful of him. Now, why would Fred send us something like that? He knows I don't smoke a pipe. Well, maybe we could use it as a candy dish. Well, it probably has some sort of antique value. Oh. And if there's no one here to catch us, then it's all right to do it. <laughs> but we don't have any smoke stuff. Sure we have. Come here. on. Well, I just remembered. My parents don't let me have coffee either. I bet you wouldn't smoke it if we had real tobacco. Well, I bet you I would too. But I don't think we should smoke it. What's the matter, you chicken? <laughs> you said yesterday if we had real tobacco, you'd smoke it. How do you feel, Beaver? I'm pretty good. You want to smoke it again? No. Well, I don't think I feel that good. Look at this. It's even darker than yesterday. Someone scrubbed it out with soap. <laughs> Why would anyone do that? Well, that's pretty obvious, dear. Our son has been smoking. Beaver? Of course not. Wally! <laughs> Wally, I know what you did. But don't you think you'd feel a whole lot better about it if you just came right out and told me all about it? Well, gee, Dad, I'd be glad to, but... I don't know what it is you want me to tell you that I did. Okay? Smoky. <laughs> yes. I'm afraid your brother took the pipe that Mr. Rutherford sent to us and smoked it. That's why your father's so upset. No, sir, just like me. What? Yes, sir. Well, I smoked the pipe. You... At least. All right, Beaver. You're going to be punished. And I'm going to call Larry's father and see that he knows all about this. You boys did something that could have had very serious results. Dad? No. Well, I think I'd better do that. Well, I'm the one that got him blamed. All right, Beaver. Leave it to Beaver. Episode 10, Wally's new suit. Starring Barbara Billingsley. Wally, relax. You're supposed to be enjoying this. Well, gee, Mom, I got a lot to think about without worrying about enjoying her. <laughs> hey, Wally, I hear you're taking Mary Ellen Rogers to the dance next Saturday. Yeah, well, I might. What about it? Well, gee, I've gone and bought sweaters and junk before by myself, but, well, gee, a suit's different. Yeah, Mom and Dad always go with us when we buy suits. Now, uh, well, how about if I just bought my own suit? Bought your own suit? Well, yeah. You could give me the money, and I could go down by myself, and I could buy it just as if you were there. Well, have you found something? Yeah, this one right here. Oh. <laughs> You're quite sure that's what you want? Sure, sure. It's the best suit in the whole store. Uh, well, you just don't like it because I bought it myself. Now, that's not true, Wally. I just don't think you used very good judgment. What your father means, Wally, is that, well, he's not sure that this is the right suit for a, for a nice little dance. Well, you guys like it? That's the best suit I ever saw in my whole life. Me too. Man is at S-H-A-R-P. Oh, I'm going to wear that horse blanket to the dance Saturday night. Well, what are you going to do when our friends see him in it? I suppose we can move. You know, we may have to. <laughs> That suit is in very bad taste. If you wear it to the dance, you're going to be embarrassed in front of all your friends. Well, gee, no, I'm not, Dad. Eddie and Tui said they were going to get the same kind. Now, just exactly what was it you wanted done? Oh, we wanted the sleeve shortened a bit. Yeah, you could just chop a hunk off. <laughs> well, I could do that, but I'm afraid that might spoil his suit. You know, this boy's got quite a build. 
I never noticed it in that other suit. <laughs> they couldn't shred the sleeves on the other one, Dad. What do you think of this one? You know, I think he may take that suit. Thank you so much. Oh, don't mention it. You know, I tried to talk him out of that other suit last week. And I want to thank you so much for being so, uh, so diplomatic. Well, uh, I took it back and got this one instead. Well, what for? It was real sharp. Well, I like this one better, that's why. Oh, yeah. I just wanted to thank you. You were right about that other suit. I would look kind of like a creep in it. Uh-huh. Leave it to Beaver. Episode 11, School Play. Starring Barbara Billingsley. Hugh Ball. First grade, buttons and bows. Second grade, pilgrims. Third grade, flowers and feathers. Oh, say, had a great big announcement. He uh, managed to pass out the spelling test? <laughs> no. The third grade's putting out a play, and our Theodore is playing the lead. Beaver? No. Don't I get to say anything either? Well, no, Beaver, no one says anything. You have to express by your actions how you feel and think. But, gee, I don't know how a bird thinks. Dad, did you see it? Isn't it real neat? Look, it's got a new button for eyes. And you're like Nanny in the whole school. Well, that's fine, Beaver. Miss Winkle is coming over from the high school. She's going to teach me how to be a bird. Tell her to stop while where my appendix was. Stop it up, children. Oh, well, fine, fine. And, and you know, if you should trip while you're floating, why, well, just pick yourself up and go on like nothing had happened. <laughs> why, even if people laugh at you, that's no great calamity. I'm going. I'm not going to get up on that stage and fall down and have people laugh at me. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> what, what have you been telling him? Hey, <laughs> well, honey, you were just wonderful. Oh, you sure were, Beeb. You were fine. Just fine. <laughs> yeah, you were okay, Beeb. It's not me, Beaver. It's me, Whitey. Oh, I'm being in the play. Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. Hi, Wally. <laughs> hi, Dad. Hi, Wally. Hi, Mom. Did you like me? <laughs> Beaver. Oh, Whitey well, can't catch a baseball very good. But I can catch one real good. Well, I guess a guy ought to do what he can do, and not what another guy can do. Beaver. Leave it to Beaver. Episode 12, The Visiting Ants. Starring Barbara Billingsley. Well, how are you? Today? Oh, that would be wonderful. Oh, of course, we'll all be here. You guys want to go this afternoon? My father says we can use a whole six passes. This afternoon? Boy. Hey, if you got free passes, I might even go. Yeah, Dad, the guys want to have a good time. <laughs> I see. Yeah, Tony's got free passes and everything. Okay, guys, I'll take you over what time you want to go. Well, and Martha can drop in and tell us what's wrong with the way we're raising them, and the boys can still get to the carnival. <laughs> now, Ward, we're going to be very nice to Aunt Martha. Oh, Lord, how are you? Uh, just fine, Aunt Martha. You remember my friend, Mrs. Hathaway? Oh, yes. How do you do? We were misdirected. And Claudia, these are my nephews. Very boys. But we really must be on our way. But uh, Aunt Martha, you just got here. I mean, boy, they can't run off like this. No, no, you can't. We were planning to have a little lunch somewhere along. Hey, Wally. Hey, baby face. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, uh, Wally, I think uh, perhaps you should go out and see what they want. Well, I know what they want. I think you should go out anyway. Gee, Wally, we said we were going to leave early. You went and said your father was going to take us. Yeah, you shouldn't have said he was going to. He's not going to. He's going to. He's going to. Yeah, but when is he going to? Let's round up the gang and get on over to the carnival. 
He already left, Dad. Oh, you can meet him over there. There's still lots of time to have fun. Oh, boy! <laughs> uh, Dad, uh, I don't think I want to go. And after it was all over, I think you could have been a little more pleasant about it all. Well, gee, Dad, it messed up our whole day, and well, we missed a lot of fun. Sure you did. Well, we were sorry the way we acted when Aunt Martha was here. Yeah, we felt bad, but we shouldn't have acted the way we felt. Well, sure, we wanted to go to the carnival, but... Gee, there's a lot of carnivals, and... Well, uh, I've just been thinking. That carnival's open until 11 o'clock. We could all go over there tonight. Gee, you understand? No, fool. You know, Mom, the guy said they got a lady over there that wraps poison snakes around herself and everything. <laughs> yeah, and there's this guy there that swallows all kinds of knives and all sorts of neat stuff like that. Leave it to Beaver. Episode 13 of Happy Weekend. Starring Barbara Billingsley. Oh, well, uh, Fred Rutherford had reservations up at Shadow Lake. It's a real great place. Rustic, you know, cabins, trout stream, everything. Anyway, he was going to have to cancel his reservations, so I took him over. We're all going up there and spend the weekend camping and fishing. Gee, Dad, do we have to go? <laughs> yeah, this is the last weekend. Jungle Fever's playing at the Olympic. <laughs> it sure is spooky. Where are the lights, dear? Down. We're all tired. We've got a big day ahead of us tomorrow. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Note. Dear Mom and Dad, we got up, but you were asleep, so we took the hike with ourselves. If we get back before you get up, you'll have to read this. Your son, Beaver. Wally, too. <laughs> Do we did, Dad? Yeah, we had hamburgers and soda in the drugstore. <laughs> and we bought some real new comic books. And the man from the lodge brought us back in a bus. Yeah, boy, this sure is a neat camping place, Dad. <laughs> boy, he's almost as big as a shark. <laughs> yeah, how many dead, Dad? Let's make six of them. All pretty good size, too. That's the hour. Well, that's three dollars for the boat. And a buck apiece for the fish. No, a piece for the fish. I thought you knew. The lodge stocks the pond, and we got this end fenced off. Well, gee, Dad, all the time we were having such a good time, well, I don't know if we were having fun or not. Yeah. Now I kind of feel sorry for the fish. Yeah. drive-in movie. Yeah, you can almost read their lips. It's jungle fever. Yeah. Well, go so Well, your father thought you'd be anxious to get back. Well, gee, no. We found a bunch of logs, and we're going to tie them together and make a raft. <laughs> Why didn't you go with them, dear? You'd have had as much fun as they would. Ah, oh, they're better off without me. I'd have wound up building a raft for them that would really work and ruin their whole day. Leave it to Beaver. Episode 14, Wally's Present. Starring Barbara Billingsley. Would you like to have some of your friends over and have a little party? Gee, that'd be great. We could have prizes and hats, and I could have Lamb and Dell over, and we could eat ice cream and everything. Well, heck, I don't want to have a party. That's kid stuff. <laughs> oh, okay, Eddie, I'll see you about 11.30. Bye. Guess that's how come you don't want to party. You're going to eat hamburgers with the girls. Well, it's not a date or anything, Beeb. Hey, Beeb, it's only $6.50. Why don't we buy it? <laughs> you got some money, Larry? No, but you've got $6.50. Yeah, you got some money, Larry? No, but you've got $6.98. Oh, you sure got 
much here. Hey, what's the big idea, Larry? It took me two whole months to save that money. Um, well, gee, thanks, Beef. Um, it's real neat. I see. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Jensen. Goodbye. Bieber spent six dollars and a half on a bow and arrow set for himself. For myself. <laughs> Bieber, that wasn't a very nice thing to do. Why'd you do it? I guess because I'm not a very nice boy. Sure. Did you uh, make the bow and arrow set back? Well, I tried to, but I couldn't. Why couldn't you? Well, uh, policemen wouldn't let me cross the street. Yeah. I only bought it because I think Wally was being mean to me. And on the way home, I wanted to try it out. But first, I had to straight up. And when Larry tried to straight up, it busted. And if you want to hit me, go ahead, because I'm tired of walking around the block. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for what? For starting out to buy a camera. And then buying myself a busted bow and arrow. Uh, it's okay, Beef. I know how it is. Leave it to Beaver. Episode 15, The Grass is Always Greener. Starring Barbara Billingsley. <laughs> Lots of checks. Yeah, there's too many. A couple more months like this and we'll all wind up in the poorhouse. Here. Hey, Wally, you know we might be going to move? Oh, yeah? Where'd you get that from? From listening to Dad. He said in a couple of months we're going to move to the poorhouse. <laughs> oh, Pete, that's just an expression. Dad, where's the closest poorhouse? What? Yeah. I want to meet some poor people. I never met any. Mr. Fletcher, are you poor? Well, I'm a long ways from being the richest man in town. Oh. Then you live in the poor house? No. It's ten minutes past four. Oh. I wish you hadn't let the beaver go off with Mr. Fletcher. Oh, he's all right, dear. Even she stole up in a Rolls Royce. A Rolls Royce? Yeah, it's real neat. They got a jerry where the back seat was. <laughs> they sure have. Well, that must be 20 years old. I hope those Fletcher boys aren't, well, you know, rough. Oh, I don't think so. Henry's a pretty solid guy. Boy, this is Sunday. You don't suppose you'll bring them over here in that Rolls Royce tow truck, do you? Say, this is a nice front yard you got. Yeah, Pete, look at the tree. Yeah. Well, what's so neat about it? It's just a tree. Well, it's got a weed and stuff. I know, but it's right here in your own yard. He... Yeah, your dad's all right. My pop says he's an all right guy. He's one of the only guys on the route that always separates the paper from the cans. And your mom's real pretty. She looks almost like a movie star. Well, Wally well, wants to build things with me. And all of a sudden, I look like a movie star. What happened? Well, I'm not sure, but I think our boys are looking at us through the eyes of the trash man's kids. Leave it to Beaver. Episode 16, The Boat Builders. Starring Barbara Billingsley. Well, they could be building with barrel stays. I don't know. They were very mysterious about it when they came in for milk and cookies. Make the projects off limits for adults. <laughs> Just have to respect their privacy or something. Hey, Chester, we can use this one for the middle. Okay. How are you doing, Joy? Beaver, will you get your head out of our kayak? Um, what is it? Uh, a racing car? No, Dad, it's a genuine Eskimo boat. Yeah, Mr. Cleaver, we're gonna try it in Miller's Pond. They take it in the ocean. <laughs> hey, Molly, these tablecloths of your mom's work real neat. Yeah, keep swapping the varnish on. It'll keep it from leaking. <laughs> hey, guys, if the varnish is dry, we can try it out over at Miller's Pond tomorrow. What? You don't suppose when they get it finished, they'll try to float it, do you? Don't you and relax. I warned Wally not to be careless. Anyway, if that boat sails anyplace, it'll be in a vacant lot somewhere among the weeds. Maybe we could pile some rocks in it and see how it floats. Rocks aren't the same as a guy. But we don't have a guy small enough.
And look at my new boots. You know, something I think Dad's gonna be real sore when he sees me. What's that? smell anything peculiar? <laughs> what I do? Would you boys mind telling me what's going on? Um, oh, I think we better wait till Dad gets back, Mom. Yeah, we're gonna have to tell all the bad stuff that happened. She don't want to have to talk twice. <laughs> well, you boys have had a chance to think this over. What do you have to say? Well, I'm sorry we put Beaver in the boat and it tipped over. Well, I'm sorry too. You'll both stay around the house here for the rest of the weekend. And there'll be no movies or television for the next two weeks. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Leave it to Beaver. Episode 17, Beaver Plays Hooky. Starring Barbara Billingsley. But the rate he and Larry ran out of here, they must be halfway to school by now. <laughs> exactly what he'd done. But isn't that being pretty hard on him? Sure, he broke one of the rules of the school. Well, oh, Miss Landers. Yes, Beaver? Miss Landers, I'm late. <laughs> no, you're not late, Beaver. You missed school today. Did Larry's mother and father know what happened yesterday? Oh, sure, Mom. They know what happened. I hope he was smart enough to volunteer the information. Yes, sir. He volunteered. As soon as he got home? No, sir. After his father started walloping him. Leave it to Beaver. Episode 18, The Garage Painters. Starring Barbara Billingsley. Hi. Oh, we've had a minor household tragedy. The weekend's coming up and the television set's broken down. What's wrong with him? Well, I don't know the technical term, but as Wally says, the two goofed out. Come on now, fellows. I'm sure you can find something to do. For instance, uh, why don't you just sit in your room and read a book? 
Gee, Dad, why are you punishing us? We haven't done anything wrong. Hey, I think I found a great book for you. Just the right one. The Adventures of Tom Sawyer. I was practically brought up on this book. Oh, yeah, that's about a kid. I once wrote a book report on it. Oh, you read the book, Wally? No, I just wrote a book report on it. I thought they were going to have a fight. <laughs> The new boy stepped over promptly and said, Now you said you'd do it. Now let's see you do it. Don't crowd me now. You better look out. Hi, Mom. Uh, hi, Mom. Do you boys realize that it's almost 1 o'clock in the morning? Hey, Dad, how come you got the doors in here? Oh, well, the paper says it may rain. If it does, it'll dry better in here. Paint store, they got a machine that shakes up the paint. Well, it's just by making them melted. Oh, yeah, I've seen it. Well, I like to watch that jiggle machine. I figure someday the top's gonna fly off the can. And then, oh boy. <laughs> Gee, Dad, me and Wally could paint for you, couldn't we, Wally? Well, yeah, I guess we could. I don't know, guys, that's a pretty big job. But she whiz in the book they let Tom Sawyer paint. Oh, your father's making you do it, huh? No, he's not making us do it. Well, why are you doing it? Because we're having fun. Yeah. Bumpy, uh, you'd like to try it? Why? So you can have fun, too. That's no fun. Well, how do you know if you haven't tried it? I've been it lots of times. Man, it's nothing. You guys are goofy. I don't like it. It's not working like it did in the book. It's a turpentine. <laughs> I know, Beaver told me to do it. You boys did a thing like this to Benji? Oh, gee, no, Mrs. Bellamy. He did it to himself. Oh, the thing is, your, uh, your mother, uh, well, she seems to think you might try to copy some of Tom's other exploits, like, uh, smoking or ditching school. There was nothing, uh, malicious or deliberate in anything he did. But, well, times have changed. It's a more complicated world. And if a fellow tried to do those things today, he'd, well, he'd be judged in a different light. Leave it to Beaver. Episode 19, Wally's Pug Nose. Starring Barbara Billingsley. Yeah, I've seen her. Uh, she's, uh... Um... Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, well, uh... There's this new girl in school, and... Well, some of the guys want to sit there and look at her. Why would they want to do that? Hello. Oh, uh, hi. I, uh, we, uh, um, there's no song. I beg your pardon? No, I was just thinking how people look different up close. For instance, I didn't realize you had a pug nose. Oh? <laughs> didn't you know? Puffy, pug, pug, a noun. A monkey, a small dog with a face and a nose like a bulldog. Okay, now you've seen it. Will you turn the light off? Well, where'd you get it? Found it. Wallace Cleaver. Wally send away for this? I found that nose gadget you keep under the bed today. You did? Well, thanks a lot, Beaver. <laughs> no, no, it was entirely an accident. Well, that's, that's pretty ingenious. What's it supposed to do? Pushes his nose down so he doesn't look like a pig. <laughs> Beaver, will you stay out of this? Uh, no, no, I haven't. Anyway, the reason I had to talk to you today is because... Do you have something in your eye? No, 
No. It's about the dance the freshman girls are having in the gym tonight. I was wondering if you were going. Oh, well, gee, I don't know. We're supposed to bring a boy, and I was wondering if you could sort of be with me. How come me? I don't know. Maybe there's something about a cute little pug nose that gets me. Yeah. Well, how do you like that? You know, Wally's supposed to be at an age where he doesn't listen to his parents. It's a pretty nice feeling, though his old pop's getting through to him. <laughs> how was the dance, Wally? Oh, it was all right, I guess. Was uh, Gloria Cusick there? Yeah, she was there. She was all right. She didn't want to dance all the time. <laughs> to Beaver. Episode 20, Beaver's Pigeons. Starring Barbara Billingsley. What's this about a pigeon pub? Yeah, Dad. All the guys are getting together and buying pigeons. We're going to teach them to raise and carry messages. Think of the money you'll see in phone calls. Joan! Oh, Lord, am I glad you're home. Dr. Bradley just left the beaver sick. Well, he was all right this morning. What is it? Chicken pox. Dad? Well, I was feeding him. Little Benji came over from next door. Oh, what did Benji want? Nothing. He just ate a handful of pigeon food and went home. <laughs> Happened to him? Yeah, I got to sleep in the back bedroom tonight. Gee, last time I slept alone, I thought I saw a ghost. Do you think I'll see one tonight? Of course not. You think a ghost would come in there and get the chicken pox? <laughs> yeah. My family's taking me away for the weekend to a hotel. My father says he doesn't know any hotel that takes pigeons. <laughs> so I thought I could live with beaver's pigeons. What's the matter? I just got home from playing baseball. When I looked at beaver's pigeons, they look kind of goofy. Goofy? Yeah, I think they must have caught something from Larry's pigeons. What's wrong with them, Mom? Well, I'll bet you one of them gets sick after he promised me not to. Well, Beaver, I don't think there's anything really wrong with them. But we thought I thought he ought to take them down to the pet's door and have Mr. Claxton look at them. But it seems that Miss Canfield and Miss Landers have, um, mice. <laughs> mice? Yes, I believe they picked them up from Nate, Al. Um, uh, something got at them. Something got at them? How do you know? Um, uh, well, two of them are dead. Raj, what happened to the beaver's pigeons? Uh, you mean those two in the cage are yours? Oh, yeah, they're Nate and Al. What happened to Miss Canfield and Miss Landers? Well, uh, no, something got in and conked them out. What, Wally? A cat ate them. Gee, Wally, didn't he... Hey. We came to make the funeral. Yeah, for Beaver's Pigeons. We brought a box and everything. Uh, these here are Beaver's Pigeons, which he named after his two teachers, which a cat ate, so he buried them. Yeah. All right, let's talk about Leave it to Beaver. Season 2, um, uh, 39 episodes. Uh, this ran from 1958 to 59, the 58 59 season. Um, I think it ran for the first 20 episodes here. Uh, we have, uh, I have believe it to Beaver seasons on uh, season one and season two. They came out individually, then they put out a box set of all six seasons. I have that as well, but uh, I put out the season two box set just to watch these here. But um, again, like season one, this is Beaver at his best when he's youngest and he's as cute as Wally's starting to grow up a little bit here. Um, but again, a lot of my favorite episodes on here, uh, uh, we talked about, uh, Beaver and Chewy, a very memorable episode where, and there's of course the, uh, shave and the pipe and, I don't know, I showed you all these clips and, uh, uh, when I did the Leave it to Beaver season one, which was like six years ago or something, a long time ago, um, I was, uh, told to shut up, <laughs> shut up with all the comments and explain the episode. So I listened. So this time I just showed little, uh, uh, clips uh, of the entire episode, uh, you know, a little 10 second clips, maybe 10 to 12 to 15 at 10 second clips, and hopefully you got the gist of it. So there you go. Anyway, it's Leave it to Beaver season two. It's one of my all time favorite shows. Um, even to this day, when I was a little kid, this was on reruns all the time. And when I got into like uh, high school, it was on on TBS in the afternoons. I used to tape it. 
uh, on videotape back then. And I had a Leave it to Beaver book, which was an episode guide, basically. Uh, and, of course, now we live in the age of DVDs. These are not available on Blu-ray, um, at least not yet. Uh, if they do come out, I'll definitely buy it again. One of my all-time favorite shows, even to this day. So check it out, Leave it to Beaver, Season 2. I'll leave a link to something down below if you're looking to buy it. And if you're watching this video, you're probably interested in buying it. So check it out, click that link, buy Leave it to Beaver, and uh, leave some comments. You know what you think about it. Watch it. Bye.